the music of Mark Holland and Autumn's Child. It's a fusion of world jazz, classical, and folk styles of music featuring the Native American flute. Their latest album is ready to make its debut, and Mark is here to tell us all about it. Welcome, Mark. Good to be here. Thank so you. So the music, so you are you are a recognized face here in St. Louis um, and a Native American flute player right. with Autumn's Child, yes. your group, and mm -hmm. we've just been listening to it. The music is beautiful. So tell us about the Native American flute. What well, makes it different? Well, the Native American flute, um, predominantly they're wood instruments, and they're made of different types of wood, and they're in different keys, and um, so they have a, the personality of their own. It has a haunting beauty mm -hmm. to it that sets it apart from all the other flutes. Um, it's a li more limited range. Um, Note-wise, after you learn the extended scale, you can get about 15 notes, mm -hmm. as opposed to the traditional concert flute, where it has three separate octaves right. and chromatic all the way through. On the native flute, you can go chromatic one octave and about a third. So, so are the flutes of different sizes? Yes. Okay. There's some of the, obviously, the higher the flute, the smaller. Mm -hmm and the longer, the lower. Mm -hmm. And I have everything from a big, huge, what I call the bazooka, to some real high screamers, mm -hmm. everything in between, so. So throughout the yeah. concert, you'll be playing different instruments. Yeah, I, I think instruments. Oh, at the concert at the Sheldon, Tuesday will be probably about, I'm gonna guess here, maybe about 12 or 13 different flutes used. Okay, yeah. do you make the flutes yourself? No, I have different flute makers throughout the country. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what drew you to the Native American flute? Well, I started off with the concert flute or silver flute and um, studied music at um, University of Missouri, St. Louis and graduated with a BA in music. Mm -hmm. And I was always interested in the whole family of flutes and in particular, the world flute family. So around 1994, 95, I um, came across the Native American flute, which I was looking for for a while. I was using an alto recorder before that okay. to try to simulate the sound, and right. it was not happening. So yeah. the Native flute uh, around 95, and when I played it, it was like something very common, mm. uh, undes undescribable connection, you know, like That's love at first sight Almost type thing. Almost like you had a past connection to that particular sound or an yeah. affinity for it. Yeah, it was, it, it was quite amazing mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the techniques that I learned on the silver flute were able to cross over and then the rest I just you know learned by uh, listening to others. So you, you're classically trained obviously yes. through through college mm -hmm. and then you switched to this more um, native or folk style right. and did, how what was your process of learning the music and learning about the Native American approach to music? Well, back in 95, as you can imagine, there weren't a whole lot of websites that were around mm -hmm. and there wasn't a lot of publications that were around. So things were a little bit harder at that time, but it got progressed and it became a renaissance. People got way more interested in the late 90s and uh, beginning of 2000. And I just uh, hunted and searched and tried to track down information and and just had a passion for it. So the music, though, it's been around for centuries. Right. And But there's been a renaissance in the last 20 years or so, you're saying, with interest? Yes. Do you find, do you feel that the internet is what uh, really spurred that? That movement? helped a great deal and uh, different organizations. Uh, there's Native American flute circles throughout the country. Mm -hmm. There are Native American flute festivals throughout the country. So there's, there's great interest around. Yeah. And, and even that carries into some parts of the world too. Yeah, so probably the internet allowed you all to, to, um, to meet and to, yeah, and to learn and grow in the music together. Right. So you've got a concert coming up this Tuesday to release your, uh, to, to um, publicize your, right. your latest CD. Yep. And Tuesday at the Sheldon, yep. where you've performed many times. Yep, and we love the Sheldon, and mm -hmm. we've performed there a lot. And, uh, the musicians that will be with me, can I mention them? Of course. Are Scott Bryan on percussion, Corey Edwards on piano, on guitar will be Aaron Burlball, cello, Jake Brookman, and bass will be Mark Torlina. Great. And so uh, these guys are amazing players, and we're going to um, perform the entire new CD called Circle of Sound yeah. uh, in its entirety. Wow. And um, this CD is a covers project, so mm -hmm. it's music from artists from the 60s and 70s, but our renditions for oh, Autumn's Child Sound. Okay, great, great. We're gonna take a quick break and come back and talk more about what that sound is in great. just a few minutes. We'll be right back after this break.